Define IoT. Hey, I just wanted to catch up a little bit. I know last video I was here in the golf course. I'm doing this one right now back to back because all week I'm going to be up in the mountains where our, where our investment property is, trying to get that thing sold as we talked about in the last video. What I want to talk to you about today is, is this last week there was a hearing in the Senate, a Senate hearing with the U.S. Senate. And there were some things there we need to talk about, about crypto, right, over crypto. And I think some things, some points we need to make and talk about mm, that you might like. Let's talk a little about that. Okay, good. So it's getting cold out here now. For some reason, it got, it got it cloudy and, and it's getting cold here in the golf course. Um, look, this Senate hearing had four people, experts, that were brought in. And of these experts, you had two of them uh, that were, were they're pro-crypto. Okay? They're all four pro-crypto. But three of them... And they thought the fourth one are all very pro centralization, if you, if you, if you, I feel right. And and and, and I listening also to to guy with Coin Bureau talk about this as well. He gives a really good summary on this. If you want to check that out, this that's a really good YouTube channel, by the way. One I listen to all the time. He's really informative. They do a really good job. That's Coin Bureau. Um, but basically, here's a summary of this. So these these senators. They, they are looking actually to try to show that cryptocurrency is a danger to the state, basically. In other words, they can jeopardize national security. Cryptocurrencies can. Showing that Russia was using cryptocurrencies with their oligarchy to get around the sanctions that existed and to be able to sell and support their war efforts. Well, there were those that actually were kind of I would say out of the four people there, there were two that were kind of, yeah, that could be the case. Yes, it could be the case. And then something interesting came up. The, the, the question came out, how much cryptocurrency is actually used in fraudulent activity? And the statements came back that were 0 0.1, 0.15% of cryptocurrencies are used in illicit, illicit activities. That's a very, very low, low number. And when you're talking about actual fiat currencies, you're talking more around three, three percent, three or four percent, right? So fiat currency is much more dangerous. And even the question came out: Would would most criminals rather deal in cash or rather deal in cryptocurrencies? Well, the obvious question came out: The cryptocurrency is transparent. The blockchain is right, and you can always find it. And cash is peer to peer. And you, there's, it's not traceable. Well, there were some, de there were some, some Democrats, some politicians there. Unfortunately, I don't care what side you're on. It. There were those. I guess we'll just say those that are just downright against crypto. And as such, the wind came up and blew me over here. And as such, we're saying, well, we're not going to accept those facts. I don't care what the facts are. I don't agree with that. There's got to be a lot more less activity than this. So they turned towards the Ukrainian expert. And he wasn't even there. He's actually in Ukraine, came in on, a, on, on screen, and they asked him, you know, what do you feel about crypto? Do you think crypto is, is aiding Russia in the war efforts towards over Ukraine? He said, no. They said, well, there are all these Russians are in crypto. He said, yes, but those Russians that are in crypto are Russians that are pro-freedom and they're anti their government, anti-establishment. They're actually our friends, so to speak. And he said that he went on to say that we actually saw the cryptocurrencies. We we're receiving cryptocurrencies to fund our defenses and our war efforts. And they asked the question, well, why? The Senate asked the question to the Ukrainian, why would you use crypto over, over fiat currencies? It's because fiat currencies take 10 days to process and get, get through our banking system, where cryptocurrency takes 10 minutes. In other words, he's showing it's much faster and it's much more efficient. 
went on to state that to give examples how he woke up one morning, heard the bombs going off. His his, ch- his child or children didn't know what was really going on. They ran, grabbed their stuff, grabbed his crypto wallet, and they took off. And they were able to go to another area. And he showed where other people from Ukraine were actually leaving, going to Poland and so forth, and use their crypto without being able to have access to the bank system. And we talked about that before. And he was saying, he even said this, he concluded this, look, they said, well, how do you feel about crypto? He said, we were doing crypto here in Ukraine before the war. And many were already doing transactions in crypto. So this isn't anything new to us. They, I really feel if Ukraine can maintain themselves as a nation. Now, listen, we have to understand something. Ukraine is not a free country like you think of when you think of like the United States or something like that. I mean, we can talk about the United States too as something else now as well. But the traditional, what you felt about the United States and other free countries, they're, they're governed by a tyranny as well. So you've got tyranny fighting tyranny right now. So, I mean, let's put the truth out there. However, however, he was stating that crypto supports the free market. And he said to U.S. senators, if you pass too many regulations, too many laws, many of these crypto companies will leave the United States and we in Ukraine will welcome them here. So, in other words, Ukraine sounds to me like they're going to open their arms as well as being a crypto haven. One more would would be, right? We'd have El Salvador, Chile still in that process, uh, from what we understand. And then we have, we'd have Ukraine as well. There's others out there working this and there's others that are already advancing this. So there's nothing, you know, new that we're seeing more countries come on. I just thought that that hearing overall, where they were trying to go out and show that crypto gets around the sanctions. And so therefore they should make it illegal, like Bitcoin, especially, right? Whereas all of them, Really, one of them was kind of like, yeah, Russians are using this as, you know, they can get around the sanctions. And the other ones were coming back saying they're experts in their field saying, no, they're not. They can't. How do you know? Well, because we can trace it. We can see any big movements at all. And it's just not happening. It's not going in or out of Russia. So while they're going to other ways, they're skipping and doing other things. So, well, there could be, but we can see all that movement. And it's just not happening. So what's being said by the U.S. government, especially U.S. president right now, about, about the sanctions being evaded, by by through cryptocurrency is just not true and those experts show that in the senate so basically this senate hearing that took place a few days ago poo-pooed it backfired and the ukrainian that was brought in and they're suspected that ukrainian was brought in to actually thinking that they were to go against cryptocurrencies and support the fact that the russians are using the cryptocurrencies to support the war efforts when in fact that backfired on the u.s senate Summary, you're just seeing a lot more positive need for Bitcoin right now. I'm not talking about Ethereum. I don't really like Ethereum at all anymore. I'm still, we still mine Ethereum because it's there to mine is the, the best one, right? But Ethereum is not what crypto is about. Ethereum is centralization. We here at DeFi and cryptocurrency holders should be supporting. All of us should be supporting. And if we're not, we need to educate our neighbors. The decentralization. I'm kind of standing here close to the camera now because the wind's coming up. So I hope that you guys will seek out to understand the importance of maintaining a free market. Look, we're seeing so many so many less fortunate people. <coughs> Excuse me. I got a chip I was eating earlier. I'm gonna throw. So many less fortunate people get involved in a crypto game and start with hope to climb out of poverty. We centralize that. They're not going to have that opportunity. I'm sorry. Many, many out there saying, yeah, but we need more rules. Yes, but we make the rules. The republic. We form a constitution. We're still calling for that constitution. We form the rules as a republic and we govern. Why will Bitcoin not be pulled over in states? Because the people, the republic, the Bitcoin holders, govern Bitcoin. And that's what makes Bitcoin a free market opportunity. And we'll maintain that way. I don't, it would be like a 99% chance, or I say a 1% chance that that could get overturned. 99% chance that that will never be overturned because the people in Bitcoin are there for the free market and want to maintain that free market. It helps everybody. It's good for all of us. And look at the people how they benefited in Ukraine. And some senators said, we need to look at how this is benefiting the people in Ukraine. These poor people too, and many people could not get their bank accounts, could not access their bank accounts, and were able to take their crypto wallets, their crypto wallets, and then leave, or their crypto passcodes, right? Their, their keys, and they leave and build pool money out in another country through cryptocurrency. Well, I wanted to give you a summary. DeFi IoT, please subscribe. 
We're going to keep things posted, keep things going. I got a couple videos now at the golf course. I'm going to try to get you something out, out later on tonight because this week I am not going to get a lot of videos out, maybe three or four videos. To be honest with you, stay with us. Uh, I'm going to get a couple of videos too of what we're doing up there, the progress. I'm going to get the video out to you about the rat situation. That was something to see. That will come out this week as well. Please subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up and write us too. Tell us what you think about what, what, where we're going with crypto and what can we do to help people better understand that we need to maintain decentralization. The United States is trying to make central decentralization look illegal, look illicit, and look bad. You centralize, it's all going to be good. And that's where they're going to go. That's very positive. That's what they're, what they're painting right now, the picture. They're going that direction. We need to support decentralization. So help us by subscribing and telling your friends and neighbors about crypto. Get them involved. I just spent the other night talking to my niece my, and, my, and my little nephew about crypto. And I gave her, you know, I, I gave her an aware. It's only making like 20, 30 bucks. And I explained to her this once had a good potential. And now, you know, we don't think that the Planet Watch has that same potential anymore. We think that we're seeing that there just aren't those out there that want this, this kind of information. And they're 600% oversaturating their market. And that's very unethical on their part. So we're showing that they're showing their true colors here. We're very, we poop it on. I'm, in fact, I'm giving away aware devices at this point. And, you know, we're just going to eat that, that $30,000 loss, that $30,000 investment we put into them. And it would be really hard pressed for Planet Wash to win us back over again. They're going to have to really show me something. Those of you who want to stay with them, go ahead. That's great. But, you know, you say, well, we're doing it for the environment. Let me tell you something. When you make a promise, hey, you come in, you invest this much money, you build our infrastructure for us, I'm going to pay you for it. I'm a contractor. That's what I grew up doing. I build infrastructure. I get paid to build infrastructure. I provide infrastructure. I get paid for it. Now, I understand there's going to be fluctuations. I can be patient on that. And we were patient. But then just to cut everybody off, that was very unethical on their part. But anyway, I gave her this aware, and I was explaining to her. I showed her four different items. I showed her an aware. I showed her a block. I'm going to give her all these things, right? Helium as well as a threefold. And so I kind of explained, went through stuff with her, and, and, and I shared that with her. My brother was there listening to, and and was like really intrigued. So I'm going to hook up. When, when I come back in a few weeks, I'm going to hook up a helium hotspot at their house too. And I told her, hey, you you do, you make, you run this, and we'll run your wallet through our offshore account, and, you know, you will go 50-50 on it. I'll put it up for you, then I'll buy you your own if you do well. And you get all 100% yours. So that's what we're, I'm doing to try to help my family and the kids in my family get ready for the future and support crypto in its proper pretense, what, is, what, is, what, it, what it was created for, to defend a free market economy. And she's, you know, 17 years old, and she's grabbing this and saying, yeah, I understand the necessity for that. And she's gone both directions because where she is in California, it's very much to the left on their, with their teachers. And if we all do our part, we'll, have, we'll maintain that decentralized market. And that allows the opportunity for so many. DeFi IoT. We'll see you in the next video. We hope you enjoyed this segment of our video with DeFi IoT. Remember, we're not professional advisors. We do this as a business as a hobby, and we study, we experiment, and we want to share it with you. If you can get some benefit from this, great. What we do is we go out, we purchase with our own money, and we experiment to see what true results are. We want you to be able to share in our experiences so you don't have to lose like we have. If you can win where we've won, fantastic. Remember to do your own research and your own homework. It's very important before you make any decisions. We will see you in our next video.